afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Welcome to Kensico Dam Plaza in Valhalla. You see behind me the fabulous uh, construct of the Kensico Dam. I'm not sure if my uh, great-grandfather worked on it or not. I know that he was a stonemason when he came here from Italy, but many men did, and they created this uh, fantastic facility, which has behind it the drinking watershed for uh, New York City and Westchester County, and in front of it, one of our great Westchester County parks, uh, the Kensico Dam Plaza. And we're here today because some of what we're going to talk about uh, relates to the county's park structure. And uh, in a few seconds, I'm going to introduce our commissioner and first deputy commissioner of Parks, Recreation, and uh, Conservation to talk a little bit about some of the activities that are happening uh, in their department. First, uh, in the 2 o'clock hour, let me give you the update on our latest numbers. We continue to show uh, good results on uh, the COVID-19 virus here in Westchester County. It's a continual, it's a day-by-day, -day, but a continual diminution in the number of overnight fatalities, in the number of active cases, and in the number of people that are hospitalized uh, for COVID at all of the various hospitals combined. Uh, as it stands now, the numbers now show that our number of active cases have dropped by 50 cases from yesterday. It was 775 yesterday. We're down now to 725 active cases of COVID in the county uh, as uh, detected. And that's on the basis of having tested 216,186 Westchester residents. And because we're working off of a base of a million people, it's a very easy number to calculate. That would be 21.6. Uh, percentage of all the population. We're heading toward 25% of the population that haven't been tested for COVID. COVID tested is easy to come by now. There's a state number that you can call and they'll tell you one of the many places now that you can get tested for COVID in the county. When this all began in the first couple of weeks, we had a drive through center in Glen Island. And uh, now we've got uh, locations all across the county where people can get tested for COVID. And if you do find that you're positive, uh, you need to isolate for two weeks to make sure that the virus gets through your system. But so many of the people that have tested have come through the system effectively. In round numbers of the 216,000 people that have been tested, over 80% uh, of them have, have tested negative originally. So the 216,000 represents that portion that, uh, I'm sorry, the, the portion that tested positive, which is in the vicinity of 34,000, is that portion that tested positive out of the 216,000 tested. The vast majority of individuals have tested negative. So that's good news. That means that while this is a very contagious virus, many Westchester residents, the far greater number, have not contracted the disease. And then for those that have contracted it, 80% of them have been able to fight the disease off within their natural antibodies in their body. Of those that have been hospitalized, the hospitalization number now is close, closing down to 100 people hospitalized. Uh, we saw in one of our hospitals where we had an overflow capacity uh, two months ago, we're now down about six people hospitalized in an individual situation, and our total hospitalization number is under 125. Uh, in terms of fatality, the news was very good last night. We lost no one to COVID virus. The first time uh, that we have had two out of three nights with zero fatalities. We lost one person the night before last, zero the night before that. And uh, that is very good news. That is the only thing to really celebrate. We have in the accumulation lost over 1,400 people to COVID related diseases, but that number is more than flattened out now. Uh, we hope that will continue night after night. As that happens, we continue now in the middle of phase two to be able to enjoy things that we could not enjoy previously. Now we're able to dine outside in phase two. We're able to go into any of the retail shops in phase two. Uh, we're able to get a haircut, go to beauty salon, uh, churches, some churches have now opened, not all religious institutions have yet. They're working out the, the uh, mechanics and the logistics of doing that. But we're starting to get back to a more normal lifestyle uh, with the decrease. And this is happening at a time when we watch the national news where the COVID infection is increasing in other parts of the country. New York now has certainly been the first. And, and let's hope that, that others don't become worse than us, but that potential threat is there. And so for all of the sacrifice that people made, to uh, put on masks and to you know, wash their hands and sanitize and socially distance and businesses that were closed, we're seeing some benefit from that sacrifice, which is the flattening out of fatalities and the flattening out of the disease. All of this is important. But even as we have gone about through the shutdown of businesses, the governor has used his executive authority to do this. Those of us in Westchester County, particularly myself and my administration, in concert with the Board of Legislators, we've tried to keep as many of our parks 
open as possible. And we've made the decision time and again to look at the intrinsic use of the park and make the decision as to whether or not that park could be socially distanced. Now we're here on a weekday. This is a busier place on the same time of the day on a weekend, as you might imagine. But this is a vast field here in Kensico Dam Plaza, and there's quite a lot of people here, but they've distanced themselves. They're on blankets and, and chairs that are not right next to each other, and that means that they're enjoying an outdoor day, which is a beautiful day, but they are not in a position to likely spread a virus if they have it or to receive it from somebody else because they have distanced themselves, as you can see from behind me and across the board. So I'm going to introduce uh, Kathy O'Connor, who's the Commissioner of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation, and then she'll be uh, joined as well at the microphone, both of them together, by our first Deputy Commissioner, Peter Tartaglia. Uh, Peter's uh, elevation to first Deputy Commissioner is fairly recent, but both he and Kathy have been longtime executives uh, in the Parks Department. They both started out uh, in jobs uh, a little further down the slope, but it allowed them to really understand the department and all its complexity because as Kathy will no doubt explain, we have all different kinds of parks that provide all different kinds of recreational services. They've been great partners. We've been in constant contact over the weekend as we look at beaches and what's happening at various golf courses here at this facility and so forth. So uh, Kathy, Pete, come on up here, share your thoughts about where we are. Thank you very much, County Executive Latimer. Uh, here we are at uh, Kensico Dam in Valhalla and as as uh, the county executive mentioned, this is a very active park. And what has been, even though uh, a really scary three months for everyone, especially in Westchester County, as the parks commissioner, what has warmed my heart at times is going to all our, we have 50 facilities, 18,000 acres in Westchester County, and more and more people are out walking, running, riding a bike, rollerblading, or just enjoying being outside. And one of our true hopes is that as things get uh, opened more and more, as the county executive mentioned, going into phase three and then eventually phase four, I hope that the people that have really started to work out and enjoy being outside for the first time, possibly in 20 years, maybe in their whole lives, that they are realizing how beautiful our facilities are, how well maintained things are. And I do have to give a shout out to the superintendent for this park, Dominic Ganjemi, who is here with us today. Um, Dominic has had the honor of dealing with a park that throughout the weekends, three and four times a day, we have to close because we are following the 50% capacity and when we can't, when we top the 50%, we do close it. Obviously working very closely with the county police as well as Dominic's staff. I've had many people actually write me saying thank you to here and to other facilities because we've actually kept the bathrooms open and it has taken a tremendous amount of cleaning and, and responsibility that they have never really had to do over the past years. But the staff has really risen. I'm so proud of them. And we have really had a tremendous positive re return on people coming out to the parks. Um, as the county executive mentioned, some of the facilities we've had to close. We're not having the ethnic festivals here because there's just too many. On a good day, we've had 10,000 people here. That certainly wouldn't fall into any category right now. But we are going to do some other events, some other uh, great things here. We're trying for the first time ever uh, the two drive-in movies, and I believe the county executive might mention it again. Um, that would be one in July, one in August, and we're going to see how that goes. And uh, the pools, two of the pools are opening June 26th, Saxon Woods Pool in White Plains, and uh, Sprain Ridge Pool in Greenberg, and then the following week, Tibbetts in York, uh, Yonkers, and then Wilson's Woods in Mount Vernon. Uh, so the four pools will be open eventually, and the two beaches that we have in Croton Point Park and uh, Playland Park are all open right now. So we've done the best we can under very difficult circumstances, but the administration has been fabulous to work with. Um, George is so understanding of what it means for us to try to keep everything clean, green, and growing during a pandemic. And just very proud of the staff and thank you to the county executive for allowing us to do what we do. And hopefully things will get better in July, August, and September. Thank you. Peter. 
Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, County Executive. Um, we have over 50 parks. Two of them are completely closed for uh, COVID uses. Most all have sections of them that are open. Not everything is open, but we've been able, um, with the leadership of the County Executive and with the Parks Department, we're able to keep open a good portion of our department, uh, whether it be trailways, walkways, um, the, re the active recreation uh, uses that Kathy just spoke about. But we are servicing so many people at such a time when things are very difficult. Uh, we've also um, had begun a Ribbons of Remembrance program at Lenoir Preserve for families to come who've lost loved ones for COVID-19 to be able to place a, a, a purple ribbon in a specific area. So we, we have really been a spot for the public to come for physical health, but mental health as well. And we're, ju we're just happy to be of service. Um, we're happy to be here. Our staff everywhere has been unbelievable. It's, it's kind of like a wartime staff right now. Um, and we've all risen to the occasion. Um, and we will continue to do that because this is what the public needs right now. And, and we thank them as well. Thank you. And I want to thank Kathy, Peter, and the, the people of the Parks, Recreation, and Conservation Group. Uh, there's men and women that do all different kinds of functions here. We owe them a debt of gratitude. Uh, they have been uh, tossed very difficult situations. How do we open a beach under these rules that, that have been created by the state? And they were able to figure it out. We're figuring out how to open the pools by those dates. Um, what do we do with our kitty uh, playgrounds? How do we, uh, how could we possibly make them open? We're discussing it now to determine if there is a way to do that. So we owe a debt of gratitude to that department. Let me also speak on behalf of our county police. Tom Gleason and the men and women of the county police department have done a terrific job. It's a very difficult time right now when you talk about police work. There's a lot of criticism uh, in the aftermath of the George Floyd murder. But I must tell you that uh, there are many good men and women in the county police department that have done exemplary work. We ask them, along with the parks department, to enforce the social distancing and the mask rules, but to do it lightly, to do it nicely. We don't want confrontation. We don't want uh, something where people get tickets or get arrested. We want people to comply, not because we want to force people to live their life a certain way, but because we know if they use masks and they socially distance, we reduce the possibility of the spread. That's the mission. The mission is to put these things away forever as soon as the virus is behind us. And the men and women of our county police department have done a fine job. They deserve our appreciation and our compliments. And I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying that we don't have other issues to deal with with policing. Uh, and we're going to work through those. And we're going to make improvements in those areas to make sure that, that the type of situations we see in Minneapolis and elsewhere don't repeat themselves. But we also have to give credit where it's due. The police department, the public safety department to be more specific, and the parks department deserve tremendous credit. I want to make sure we say that publicly so everybody understands where we're coming from. Uh, Kathy mentioned that we're going to have two uh, movies under the stars here at Kensico. Uh, it's going to be The Secret Life of Pets on Friday night, July 17th, and Wonder Park on uh, Friday, August 14th. Those are two Friday night dates in the summertime, and they're going to be drive-in movies. You're going to come in in a car. There is a fee involved. Uh, you'll be able to uh, take your lawn chairs right out in front of your car, right in your immediate area, not cluster in a big group of people. But uh, and, we, and the parking will be spaced out, so there's space between the cars. This is a terribly difficult logistic area for both the parks and the police departments to work. But we don't want this place to lay fallow, and we want to do things that can be fun. So we've often had movies here at this park in which people just come around with a movie screen. Is, well, we can't do that. So the next best thing, going back to my childhood, drive-in movies. And we have these two planned here at Kensco Dam Plaza. Uh, they're targeted for family enjoyment kids as well and uh, we're looking right now at a possibility of doing something similar at the playland parking lot we haven't finalized how that might happen yet when we do uh, we'll be able to announce that as well and it, it is in concert with the strategies we're using all the time i've said this many days in a row we're not trying to close everything and we're not trying to open everything we're making decisions indivi individually as uh, Peter said, we can't have our ethnic festivals here this year as we've had in past years. And this is a wonderful experience. African American Day, Italian American Day, for the Irish community over at Ridge Road Park, 
for uh, the Asian community. There's, there's music, there's dance, there's food, there's vendors. It's a wonderful day, but that series that would have begun in May, would go on until the end of August, just isn't workable under these circumstances. We're more worried about the spread of the virus in that kind of an environment. So we've had to close those events. So we keep the park open. We do these uh, drive-in movies uh, as an opportunity for some enjoyment. At the same time, we recognize that we have to close down some elements of it. And that's the same way we look across the board. We've extended more time for Bicycle Sunday on the Bronx River Parkway. It doesn't come quite up this far, but when you go down to a county center, that's going to be the new northern, is the new northern terminus now down to Yonkers. We've kept that open and we've expanded the number of dates for Bicycle Sunday. The golf courses are open. They're actually having a record year. If if you judged uh, things by the golf uh, in the county, we'd be having a fabulous year. It's just that's the only thing we're having is a fabulous year. But uh, we're working through each of these different issues with the parks, and we are going to look at different ways to use our other parks creatively. I would point out that uh, in two days' time on Thursday, Rhinek High School is having their high school graduation in a drive-in setting at the Playland uh, parking lot. And, uh, you know, all of the high schools are trying to figure out how to get through this graduation year. It's unfortunate that the class of 2020 has to go through something that's very different from all the rest of us that had that great senior year in high school and, you know, the fun and the proms and all that. Unfortunately, the class of 2020 um, was denied that because of the COVID. But uh, Rynek High School, as one example, is going to have that drive-in graduation in a couple of days. And that's where we're using a county park for that purpose uh, appropriately. Kensico Dam in general, really a beautiful facility. We encourage you, if you live anywhere in Westchester County, uh, on days when we're not filled to the gills, there's ample parking, not just here, but we'll use the outer ring for parking where necessary. And uh, it's a great place to walk around. There is sort of a way you do this, sort of in a particular uh, counterclockwise fashion. Uh, but this dam behind us, the architecture is fabulous. And uh, certainly people who run, people who bicycle, you can bring your dogs and have them walk around and so forth uh, as long as they're on a leash and it's great fun. We also want to repeat the announcement we've made already that summer camps will open this year, some of the county summer camps. The target date is July the 6th, Monday, July 6th. That's the day after the 4th of July weekend, which will be the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, two weeks from this weekend coming up. Uh, we have camps at Cranberry Lake. Uh, Nature Center, which is right up the road here on 22. Lenore uh, uh, Preserve in Yonkers, where we have the Ribbons of Remembrance. That's on uh, uh, North Broadway at Executive Plaza, that area of North Yonkers. And uh, the Marshlands, which is in Rye, right on the Boston Post Road, just north of the mamaroneck Rye City border. Those camps are 80% sold out, so we've had that much demand already. The Muscoot Farm Camp, which is up in Somers, is 100% sold out. And we have a hole-in-one golf camp that's going to be at our different golf courses, and that's 70% sold out. So we know that parents need a break, uh, and they want to have things for their kids to do. Kids are not going to be able to spend the whole summer doing nothing or hanging out. So by keeping some of these summer camps open, uh, once again, we're trying to make sure that there's that enjoyment. Uh, it's going to be structured with less uh, individuals. We're not going to have the same volume of kids. They're going to be organized in ways to try to do the best we can for social distancing. But we wanted to have some fun, and that's part of it. Now, tickets for the Trailside uh, facility, which is up in uh, Cross River, that area of the county, Lewisboro Town, uh, will be going on today. That's a different kind of a structure. I won't do it justice if I try to explain it. It involves a family box and so forth. So go on the, uh, the website, and uh, if you look at westchestergov.com, look up recreation programs, you get an explanation of what we're doing at Trailside, and that's a, that's a different way to enjoy a park for this period of time. But we're very happy that the parks have stayed open. We're very happy that we were right in presuming that properly structured it would not add to the spread. The numbers for COVID are going down, and yet we still have recreational outlets for people, which we think are important. Those are with honor and our responsibility. If we make the right decision, good for us. If we make the bad decision, bad for me, because the boss takes the blame if it goes wrong. If, we're, if, we, if we succeed, everybody gets credit. But uh, that's, that's the nature of circumstances. I do want to mention in non-COVID-related information that if you are planning to vote in the primary that's, that's scheduled for June 23rd, early voting is now underway. You can avoid having to go on primary day to vote, and there are going to be less precincts available on primary day than normal. And you may not know where you usually vote won't be open. We're not sure. You'd have to check uh, uh, locally with the Board of Elections. But early voting is open, and today early voting goes until 8 p.m. tonight. So if you want to vote in the various primaries, there's a presidential primary, 
There is a primary countywide for the district attorney's slot. There are two separate congressional primaries that cover most of the county. One uh, district is south of 287. One district is north of 287. That's the seat that will replace retiring Congresswoman Nita Lowy. There are at least three um, uh, primaries for state assembly uh, that I'm aware of, and there may be some other primaries that I'm not aware of. But you can vote early at certain designated locations. Uh, we have put those locations up, I believe, on our website, uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, and there's not one in every community. There's a combination where you join together. So if you live in North Salem and Somers in the northeast corner of the county, you would vote at the Somers townhouse in the heart of Somers. If you live in um, uh, New Rochelle or Pelham, you would vote at the New Rochelle City Hall Annex, which is at 90 Beaufort Place behind the front entrance of City Hall, which is on North Avenue. Uh, if you live in um, Mount Pleasant or North Castle, which is the area we're in, North Castle right on the other side here, Mount Pleasant here and above, you're voting at the, uh, the community center, known as the Senior Center, that's located uh, up the road 125 uh, Loazo Drive. And if you go through each of the different areas of the county, two and three communities in most cases are combined for locations. City of Yonkers has two locations for early voting on the west side of town at Riverfront Library, right down by the train station, everybody knows that. And on the east side of town at the Will Library, everybody knows that, right on Central Avenue, just south of Tuckahoe Road. But uh, I've early voted, and, and I encourage you to do that. If you are waiting for an absentee ballot to come through the mail and you haven't gotten it yet, you are entitled to vote early if you'd like. Obviously, once you've voted, then the absentee ballot becomes null and void. Do not submit that. But there's been some concerns, some problems that have occurred. You can avoid those problems by voting early if you choose to do that. Early voting will continue today, tomorrow, and through this Sunday. Each day has some different times. Check our website, Board of Elections website. You'll get the details. So with that, I'll go to any questions that Catherine Chaffee has for me, our Director of Communications. Uh, the Journal News is asking, uh, there have been complaints in areas of New York City about not social distancing and not using masks. Have you seen that in areas, any areas of Westchester, and how do you enforce the rules? Well, there have been some examples of uh, mask wearing and social distancing that haven't occurred uh, uh, in Westchester County. I don't think it as profound as it is in New York City. Part of that's the population difference. New York City is eight to nine times the population of Westchester County. Uh, we do have our urban centers. I would say, uh, in general, people are observing social distancing, although I will say in the various justice rallies and marches, uh, social distancing has not been prioritized. Mask wearing is somewhere in the 75 to 80 percentile range for most people. Uh, I have been in settings where people were not wearing masks, individuals or some combination of individuals, but the larger number of people I think in Westchester are complying. But if you went out uh, just here and you walk through place to place, what you'd also have to remember is if you're part of a family and you're on a blanket, you're not required to have a mask. You're required to have a mask when you are walking in general in the community and the likelihood is you're gonna come in contact with other people. So if you see me standing here speaking without a mask, no one is within six feet of me, that's okay. I put the mask on when I finish speaking because I'm gonna walk past the various people who are here and, and I'm trying to protect them from any germs that I may have. So that's the general sense of it. The enforcement is done here, uh, I would say, you know, lightly. What we're trying to do is enforce for compliance, not for punishment. And where we have uh, officers, park rangers, both of whom have been trained uh, in uh, criminal justice issues, park staff, which may not be trained in that, but understand how the park works. The intent is to remind people to wear masks. Uh, where we have masks available and someone doesn't have one, we try to provide that for them as a means to do it. We find that the majority of people that don't wear masks may say, I forgot to bring it with me, or yeah, I have it in my pocket, I didn't know I had to have it on right now, or it's slung around my chin. Uh, and, and when asked nicely, they generally respond. There are people who willfully do not want to respond. They view, for certain reasons, that mask wearing is, uh, in their mind, not appropriate, not relevant. Uh, I could argue with them, but what's the argument going to accomplish? Uh, they're asked to uh, please comply, and that's the focus of how we try to enforce it. We have not written tickets. We have not arrested individuals. We don't think that would be productive. And in a large group of people, we've already had situations for other reasons that have caused conflict between uh, uh, average citizens and police. We're not looking to ex uh, amplify that now. We want people to comply. Uh, we want to encourage them to comply, and that's how we're trying to get, uh, we're trying to get compliance. 
Very good. Well, we thank you for watching. Uh, beautiful setting out here. We encourage you to visit any of our parks over the weekend. Uh, we might finally have good beach weather this weekend, which is exactly what uh, Kathy and Peter do not want to hear. <laughs> because it means extra work for them and the people who work uh, for us. But uh, the beaches will be open. Pool's not open yet. Two beaches open this weekend. Uh, all of our other parks, uh, with a few uh, small exceptions, Croton Gorge Park will be closed. County Center, of course, is off limits now because of the uh, uh, facility that's been created there for backup hospital services. But every place else open. Uh, these are your parks. We hope you enjoy them. We hope you stay safe. And um, we'll see you again tomorrow for a COVID conversation at 11. And then we'll be back again at 2 o'clock tomorrow to give you more information. We're making progress. Things are dropping. We're continuing toward phase three. Have a good day. George Latimer, County Executive.